And so the next table question is from Assemblymember McCartney and relates to homelessness. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the budget was a huge missed opportunity to tackle homelessness and rough sleeping in London. The Chancellor should have used the budget to announce a comprehensive plan to tackle rough sleeping. For London, this should have been based on my comprehensive rough sleeping plan of action. And crucially, the government should have agreed to honestly address the causes of rising homelessness and rough sleeping. My plan of action, developed closely with councils and charities in the sector, shows we need more than £500 million over the next five years to prevent rough sleeping and help people off the streets. In contrast, the government announced in August just £100 million for the entire country, and the majority of that money was being recycled. More broadly than rough sleeping, the Chancellor should have also put money toward tackling wider reforms of homelessness. Uh, London councils need far more money to meet their new duties under the Homelessness Reduction Act, and they're currently providing temporary accommodation for almost 55,000 households, including almost 90,000 children, a shocking state of affairs in one of the wealthiest cities in the world. The Chancellor should also have used the budget to address the causes of homelessness, such as welfare changes, including universal credit. And this budget should also have reversed cuts to services that provide support for people with mental health and substance misuse problems. It should have committed government to addressing what is now the largest single cause of homelessness in London, the ending of an assured shorthold tenancy through a radical overhaul of the private rented sector. And it should have committed to a significant long-term increase in funding for new social housing. On all these counts, the budget failed. Since I became mayor, we've secured an additional £12 million for London-wide services to help rough sleepers on top of the £8.5 million a year we've set aside for these services. This combination of services helped nearly 5,000 people last year. This extra fund that has meant more and better services and my outreach team has now doubled in size and now includes a dedicated team working in London's transport network. But work to tackle homelessness in all its forms will remain an uphill struggle without proper intervention from government, not just to help those already experiencing homelessness, but to change their policies that are actively fueling it. Thank you. And Mr Mayor, you have previously called for a pause to the rollout of universal credit and all the evidence, including the new shelter report out today. Yep shows that the transition to universal credit means that those delayed payments mean that so many more people now are in the rent arrears and struggling and therefore being evicted and losing um, their homes. With a new Minister, Secretary of State now at the DWP, will you again write to her and ask her to reconsider the work that's being done around universal credit? Chair, uh, it is my intention to uh, write, as I normally would, to a, a new member of the government, uh, uh, and Amber Rudd is the new Secretary of State for DWP. And of course, I'll be making the point when I write to her about the impact in relation to universal credit we've seen with the pilots, the link with the increase in food banks, increase in rental rates, and I'll be writing to her, to, uh, asking her to stop uh, the rollout of universal credit, bearing in mind our experience in London. Thank you. And Shelter um, is calling for homelessness advisors to be available homelessness advice to be available in job centres. Is that something you could perhaps suggest as well? Absolutely. Thank you. And of course, the weather this week has turned extremely cold. I know last year you made sure that homelessness, sh 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 those cold weather shelters were open sooner and longer than ever before. But what more can you do this year to make sure with those rising numbers that there are more places for those vulnerable people to go? Thank you for that question. So, so we are doing more this winter than ever before. But it's worth reminding ourselves that rough sleeping doesn't just occur in winter. Yeah. It happens all year round. And you'll have seen the chain data for last month, which is very worrying in relation to them identifying more rough sleepers than uh, before. So we'll be announcing the further measures we're taking uh, this winter. As you remember last year, rather than consecutive nights, temperature being required before shelves were opened, we opened them whenever we thought we were getting it there or thereabouts uh, towards freezing temperature. We're doing more work this year, and I'll be announcing some of that, those plans uh, in, the, in the course of the next few days. Thank you.